Okay, folks, thank you for joining the Iron Spring Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, we've had a few people ask us um, about the Sportsman 58, wanted some more videos about it, and we're going to talk about a couple of the few weak links with this shotgun. Um, if you don't know, this uh, particular shotgun here is a 1956 Sportsman 58. This is the precursor to the Remington 1100. There was um, a shotgun between the two, the Remington 878 Automaster. Um, it has a similar gas operating system like the Sportsman 58, but it has a different trigger group and um, than the Sportsman 58 and the 1100. The Sportsman 58 and the 1100 share more similarities than the Remington 878 does with the two of them. So uh, we're going to break this gun down, talk about a few of the, um, just a few of the weak links that are with this platform. So first things first, the gun is empty. <clears throat> we always check to make sure the gun is empty. Uh, first things first after that is take off the magazine cap. <clears throat> On the Sportsman 58, the magazine cap is also the regulator valve. On the end of the cap, you can see an H and L. Um, and turning it, and you can turn it either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, but setting it to H and L uh, opens and closes certain ports that are in the top of this cap, which lets so much gas escape or keeps so much gas within the gas chamber in, at the end of the magazine tube. <clears throat> Next, we put the action back, and then like you've seen, the barrel and the forearm come off, and then they separate. Okay, uh, next thing we need to unhook the gas piston in the end of this magazine tube with the operating rod, <clears throat> and if I pull the action back, you'll be able to see in this magazine tube, there's a notch that the gas piston and the um, operating rod have to be in this notch and then they'll come apart. <clears throat> For this, I've got a quarter inch drive, um, like a screwdriver handle that I push the piston down with in order to get it unlatched. Try to do this and keep it in camera which might not happen. So once we get it lined up, the action operating rod just pops out and the gas piston comes out the end of it with the action spring. <clears throat> not much to the gas piston. It doesn't have a gas regulating valve like the 878 does. Uh, but it does have a gas sealing ring on it that the 878 does not have. <clears throat> okay, uh, next thing would be to take the trigger mechanism out of the shotgun. For that, we've got us a bench block, a punch, and a hammer just to tap it out with. Trigger mechanism comes out of the shotgun. Like you would do in 1100. Pulls right out. <clears throat> Final thing would be to pull the operating handle or charging handle. And then the bolt um, operating rod assembly and all will slide out the front of the receiver. Actually, you'll have to press in this shell stop latch. So 
once we get that pressed in. Slides out again. <clears throat> so at this point, your shotgun is broken down for cleaning and any kind of maintenance. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> we're going to talk about just the few weak links of the Sportsman 58. Um, they seem to be generally regarded as a pretty reliable, pretty tough shotgun. Of course, they don't have the reliability and the toughness of the 1100, but they were a pretty good start for Remington when they stepped into the gas-operated semi-automatic shotgun sector. So <clears throat> I'm gonna set the receiver to the side. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now of this operating rod, uh, it'll break down, uh, the bolt will come off, then there's this lower plate, I'm sure there's a technical name for it, and then of course your operating rod. So, <clears throat> the number one weak link of the Sportsman 58 is going to be this extractor. They are known to break. Um, if you do find one that's broken, or if yours does break, it's not a big deal to worry about. It shares the same extractor as the 870. Um, so, finding another extractor is easy peasy nothing to worry about with that but that is that's the number one weak link when it comes to the sportsman 58 as this extractor here the next weak link in this system and if it does break of course it's going to be more than just nothing special is this link here this link uh, that connects the operating rod to the gas piston. So with this system, the gas piston is in the magazine tube and it's got the action spring behind it. This operating rod fits into the hole on the gas piston. And this system is back and forth every time the shotgun cycles. So the recoil, the whole operation of the gun hinges on this one pin. Now they don't break every day, uh, but I have seen some of them break. And when it comes to, if you want to say a catastrophic failure that would stop the gun from functioning, that's what that's gonna be. Uh, pretty much that's, that's the only major <clears throat> weak link in this system that if it breaks, um, you're gonna to have to see a certified gunsmith. <clears throat> Uh, beyond that, uh, the only other thing is there is a O-ring seal in the end of this forearm. Um, I actually have a new one here. Uh, it's a square cut O-ring seal. Um, and this was what I was talking about that may give you problems if you find as the gun ages. Um, this O-ring, like any other O-ring, can get hard over time and then it won't be uh, making a good seal because the um, gas ports are inside of this ring on this barrel, similar to 1100, and that um, O-ring fits right in here where this barrel lug fits inside the forearm, and it just ensures that there's a good enough seal that the gas can go into the magazine tube and operate on the gas piston to actuate the system. So I would say if you've got a Sportsman 58 and you're having, uh, shoot it one time it works, shoot it one time it doesn't, um, you've kind of checked everything out, everything looks good, you may need to uh, pull the gun apart, check these ports, make sure they're clear, they're not gummed up with something, um, 
make sure you you know your pistons clean and things of that nature. But then you may need to look at that seal. That seal uh, may be hard, and it may be allowing some gas to escape by it and not getting the full power of the um, gas on the gas piston. <clears throat> and uh, that's pretty much it so far as tear down. Of course, putting it back together is the opposite. It's a little bit more tedious to put back together because of the type system it is. You know, you've got to press the uh, shell stop latches in order to get this, you know, uh, bolt, uh, plate, and operating rod assembly back into the action shotgun. Then once you get it to that point and get the trigger mechanism in the receiver, then of course you've got to put the gas piston back into the magazine tube, press it down, align it in the notch, get the uh, notch in the magazine tube, the hole in the gas piston and the uh, pin and the operating rod all lined up together to lock together. And then the rest of it's pretty much easy after that point. <clears throat> I will say, that so far as cleaning this shotgun, uh, it's right here. It's difficult to read. You probably won't pick it up on camera. <clears throat> Remington's got uh, some kind of ink stamp on here. It says, do not use oil or solvent. Piston and inside of tube must be clean and dry. So uh, I would say if, um, if you need to clean the inside of this magazine tube or your piston, uh, use... Um, a good gun cleaner that you like, uh, probably like a nylon brush if it's real dirty, and uh, make sure it's dry before you put it back in. Uh, beyond that, uh, I use rim oil to coat the action on the inside. Uh, I recently picked up Otis Dry Lube. That's what I've been using on the trigger mechanisms of my shotguns. Uh, it seems to work pretty good. And then on these older shotguns like this, I, I tend to use a wax, a Renaissance wax. Um, believe it or not, this stuff is actually pretty good. Um, just to give you an example here, I've got a, this is a 1940 model uh, Winchester 94 and 32 Winchester Special. And you can see from the barrel and the fore end of it that it's got somewhere where um, a previous owner at some point probably had a rifle sheath that it fit into and it wore some of the bluing off. But I put this same Renaissance wax on it and um, it seems to hold up good. It doesn't uh, spot up rust when it's in the safe. I'm able to take it hunting and um, if I get into any wet weather, run into any kind of rain or anything, it doesn't flash rust. And um, <clears throat> I'm able to, of course, once I get home because of the bluing wear and all, um, I do give it a good wipe down and give it a good clean. Which this shotgun, uh, the bluing is more intact, but we all know that rust bluing um, doesn't hold up as well to moisture and salt water as a more modern shotgun with hydro dip or Cerakote. So these guns, these older guns, as beautiful as they are, tend to take a little bit more maintenance and they don't do as well with as much abuse. So <clears throat> taking your shotgun out in the spray of salt water, saying, oh, I'm not done with it this season yet, and sticking it in the safe is a big no-no with these older shotguns. Uh, I would say, you know, any, any blue shotgun, but, you know, Auto 5s, Sportsman 58s, Remington 1100s, your 870s, I mean, this is just stuff that, and then whenever the rust starts, it's hard to stop. It takes the bluing away from the shotgun. You can actually see on this one where somebody kind of done the same thing and the bluing is, it's not pitted, even though it looks pitted, but it's just not there on this bottom part of the magazine tube. Um, but luckily somewhere, but nothing, nothing damaging to the shotgun on the outside or inside of the receiver where the, um, or the barrel, that's gonna have to put up with the weather from use in hunting. <clears throat> but really, um, 
that's pretty much all there is to the Sportsman 58. It's not a super complicated system. It is a more tedious system to take apart and to put back together. There is more parts, there's more pieces to lose. Um, I would say it's a little bit more aggravating. I would not disassemble this shotgun in the field beyond just if I had a squib load, taking the barrel off and, you know, and, and getting the, uh, the wad and the shot out of the barrel, uh, I would not take this shotgun apart to the extent that you see it here sitting in a boat or in a deer stand or anything like that, thinking that, oh, maybe I can do something small and put it back together. Because there is a good chance, I mean, all, all it's gonna take is for you to lose a piece um, or be in a hurry and then you're scouring the internet trying to find parts for a shotgun that's been discontinued for 70 years. Um, they're good shotguns. If you take care of it, I believe it'll take care of you. Of course, they're not as reliable as the 1100. Um, the 1100, I mean, nothing compares to the 1100. It's, uh, it's got the reputation behind it, um, but you know, when it comes to development and uh, pushing forward with firearms. And um, this was Remington's first step into the semi-automatic gas-operated shotgun. And it was a pretty good step. They done pretty good. Um, you can scour the internet. A lot of people's got them. A lot of people, they like them. Uh, they're a very light shotgun. They're not very heavy. Uh, I've hunted with it some this year, uh, and while I got it apart, I'm going to clean it and put it back together. They, uh, it doesn't have a lot of recoil, um, especially compared to something like, uh, say, a pump. I had a pump Winchester standard Winchester 12 model uh, with high power two and three quarter shells. Compared to this, I mean, I mean, this was like a Cadillac compared to that. They, um, and they're. They're beautiful shotguns. I mean, there's just the uh, engraving that Remington did on them in the bluing. I mean, it's a 70 year old shotgun, roughly. I mean, I hadn't done the math exactly. And we're talking about it today in 2023 and how, how to keep them running. I mean, we're not talking about throwing it in garbage. We're talking about just keeping the maintenance up on them and the few small things that, uh, um, you know, that's not detrimental and, and it's fixable. You know, if, if the extractor breaks, I mean, that's that's an easy fix. You can fix that at home. If the um, pin breaks in the operating rod, I mean, that's gonna take a little bit more work, but you can have it sent off or you take it to your gunsmith and have it repaired. I mean, this is something that you can, if you're determined, and you may never have a problem with one, but if you do have one of these issues, you can keep the shotgun running right on and right on. And uh, days that you're feeling nostalgia, days that you, you know, you want to shoot something different. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to leave the Maxis at home or you want to leave the SX4. You just want to hunt maybe like what the way grandpa did. Uh, I mean, it'll be there for you. So um, that's pretty much the end of the video today. Uh, just had a couple people ask about it, so we wanted to, um, this video, I kind of showed you how to take it apart. The main focus of this video is not uh, really disassembly, even though it is a part of it. I, I wanted to show you the two weak links in this system, and then talk about the gas seal in, in the form that could, with age, uh, not make a good seal and could potentially give you uh, reliability issues with the shotgun that would be you know, a $10 O-ring and you're back to work again. So uh, thank y'all for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Uh, we're growing this channel every day and uh, we're just gonna keep on keeping on. We talk with you later. Thanks now.